Hi there, listener. You're about to experience Tadpog. Tyler and Dave play old games, and there will be plenty of game talk, but also copious amounts of crude, off-color, offensive, and immature speech. So if you are of a rather sensitive humor constitution, we're just letting you know what you're in for with this show. It has games. It has jokes. You know, just games and jokes. Take the games, take the jokes, and have a good time. Hello, Internet. Welcome to another Tadpog podcast. It's a show that happens twice a week where two old guys and somebody who I imagine is a couple that would rival Josh and Nicola for Tadpog Sweethearts. Bill and Hillary Clinton. We have have both of them. On this episode. I think everyone that we know is more in love than Bill and Hillary Clinton. <laughs> Dave, you and I are far more in love than Bill and Hillary Clinton. I think that's debatable. I think I think you're damaging somebody's campaign. <laughs> I would I would never cheat on you. Never, Dave. Thank you. I appreciate it. I'll put cig- I'll put cigars in altars of people, but only yeah. sanctioned by you first. I'm okay with it. You don't even have to ask permission. So, <laughs> so of uh, so on the show today of Hops and Heroes fame, the Reverend Barbecue Baron Drew Rowland, and do we have any, any title for you, Bailey? No, I don't think we do have a title for Bailey. And of Large Breast fame, because I noticed that in the Wonder Woman custom and had and had, had to comment about it, uh, Bailey War. Hey, hey, yeah, glad to be here. Thanks. <laughs> what's up? What's up, guys? Uh, nothing. Just uh, hanging out. That's all I got. <laughs> Just the large breasts. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure you have like eyeballs or something. I didn't notice, but I wager you have them. It's fine. She's got the one good one. <laughs> <laughs> so, but we started talking about Fallout 3. Then we talked about Fallout New Vegas. And since all four of us have been playing Fallout fucking 4. And so I, I don't know how this episode, like, spoilers-wise, is going to go. I know I don't think I'm far enough to really spoil much, but... You got to be farther than I am. Because I know, like, I, I looked at your Steam time. Steam is wrong. Because, <laughs> like... I looked yesterday, I was like, I was just curious. I'm like, well, I've got about <laughs> maybe eight hours in this game. Let's see. Tyler has over 50. <laughs> <laughs> well, Steam, my Steam account says I have 72 hours to do it right now. <laughs> But Steam, like if I pause the game, yeah. Steam still counts. It logs it, yeah. The, the game does not. So in game time, I have logged almost exactly 49 hours. That's a lot of time. <laughs> well, uh, Meg went out of town this weekend, and each grandmother asked to watch Kenna for a day and night. So I spent like two solid days of just... It's like, fuck, oh, fuck the diet. Fallout, Fallout 4 is out. So I just ate garbage food and played Fallout 4 for basically just two days straight. I like how I like how Fallout 4 and the diet were like, just the, all the same yeah. sentence. It's not like you kind of like sneak something in or, under the radar. I was like, yeah, I mean, you know, just Fallout 4 and just forget the diet. And then, yeah, yeah play some Fallout 4. Be fine. Like, I'm just going to enjoy everything right now. <laughs> yeah. I'm, gonna, like, I'm not going to like drink diet soda and wa- drink water and fall out. No, I'm going to get a whole six pack and a pound from Taco John's, eat it by myself and play Fallout 4. No dandelion and burdock soda? No. Okay. I need to. I'll mix that with alcohol at some point in time and finish it <laughs> off, but yeah. Well, before we get to anything else, I'm your bitter host, Tyler, and I'm trying to think of an intro story, and I'm going to talk about Fallout 1 and 2. Okay. I haven't played either of those. Oh, so I tried. Um, I played Fallout 3 uh, pretty late in the Fallout 3 timeline, like all the DLC was out and everything like that. So I played through every bit of it, and it wasn't a long wait before New Vegas came out, and I went through New Vegas, and I just wanted more. Because like I coming into 3, I had no real knowledge of the series, just knew that Jacob and Josh were crazy about it. Mm-hmm. So bought it, it was cheap, and fell in love with every, everything about it. I was like, I want to... I want to go back, and I was on the Wikipedia looking up all the all the crazy lore and trying to connect everything. I was like, I want to play one and two. How can I do that? And I was not a PC gamer kid, like at at all, at all. So like going back and trying to figure out because I know Wiley, 
uh, Maester, Grandmaster Wily has talked about, like, before the re-release of Grim Fandango, trying to get that working on any sort of modern machine. It's right. just like, you just couldn't do it. So I didn't know how I was going to be able to play it or whatever, so I just did some research, sat on it, waited, and eventually I saw it pumped up on Steam. Fallout 1 and 2 were on Steam and were for sale. It's like, perfect, fantastic. Got them, downloaded them, play, pff, crash. It's like, what? what's going on? Okay, maybe I'll try Fallout 2, pff, crash, like... What the fuck did I just buy from Steam? Look it up. Well, apparently Steam like put them up for sale. They don't work, but you can you can buy them. Do they work now? How long ago was this? Uh, this was when I was in DC. So this was years ago. Like it said, you had to install them direct. You uh, instead of just having them in the Steam window and install them like to your desktop, you had to disable um, Windows.exe in order to be able to play them, which basically makes everything else on your computer unusable. So I did that. It's fine. The, you just need a Fallout 1 and Fallout 2 <laughs> computer, right? <laughs> the, the colors were all, like, fucked up yeah. trying to play it, and the controls were not working very well. And Fallout 1 and 2 are such different games. Yeah. Such different. Like, switching to a first-person perspective is what makes all the difference for me in, in Fallout. But otherwise, it's just, you know, very slow point-and-click, your vault dwellers moving around it's still mm-hmm. like the same the same world but i mean ugh, they're hard it's really hard to go back and play those games i can see back in the day where they, they were just like amazing and so different but man going back was rough now i hear that uh good old games has a perfectly fine working version you can buy and buy and play i know they have copies of it i haven't played them yeah, and but... i haven't i haven't checked to see if steam fixed it i was so disheartened and angry it's still like i didn't not use stop using Steam or use it at any less frequency. They still get all sorts of my money. I like and to think time. you're just like you tried to install it, and it didn't work. You're like, ah, oh, well, fuck it. I'll just buy something else. <laughs> yeah. Play it. I get it. So, yeah. buy, buy or beware. Even some, even something I love as much as Steam will totally just fuck me. It's fine. <laughs> What's up, Internet? I am Dave. I am your bespectacled host. And, um, I am super excited about a lot of things. Like there's just this, like this last week has just been a crazy amount of awesome stuff that's like coming out, stuff to look forward to. Fallout Four obviously came out, um, and spoilers. I'm I hate it. It's the worst. (laughs) But no, actually, I do love it a lot. Um, But also, um, with Bob and David came out, and that was great. Um, Ash versus Evil Dead is out. That's wonderful. Fucking Force Awakens is coming out next month. That's, I mean, hopefully going to be amazing. And my high, my hopes are super high for that. <laughs> Not only is the gun out of your mouth, you've even unloaded it and put it in a drawer. No, it's still in there. Oh, okay. Yeah, no, we're <laughs> no good. I'm still on Suicide Watch. Don't worry. Um, there's also, um, I mean, there's just so much stuff that that's coming out. And that I'm looking forward to. Mystery Science Theater 3000 is getting uh, is coming back. Uh, there's a Kickstarter for it, which is amazing. Um, it's super expensive. I think like if you want to get the episode, it's like well, you got to kickstart a hundred dollars. Um, and everyone's doing it. A lot of people are doing it. Is it and just like are they just trying to buy the rights from whoever owns them, and they're just no? Um, it's just they're so their baseline goal is like two million bucks. If there's $2 million uh, that's donated or that's funded, uh, they'll do three episodes. Um, and yeah. What? Yeah. I, I don't know. I don't know how much. Everything's it, like CGI. I guess the cost of puppetry yeah. is just out, outlandish <laughs> I don't now. Think, like, I mean, $2 million is not a lot of money for like something like that. It's, it's just not. <laughs> is, it, is it not? No, it's not. Hmm. I, don't, I, don't, I mean, like I an episode of 30 Rock probably costs like. A million bucks? I don't know. (laughs) (laughs) So, just a bunch of stuff coming out. Super excited about that. All of it. We got to hang out with some of the Mystery Science Theater guys at Dragon Con two years ago. Yeah. For like a minute. Like, we talked to them for a really long time in the celebrity (laughs) meet and greet room. That's awesome. Yeah, they were really nice. They were really nice. They were like, yeah, you guys should meet up with us later and walk to this other thing we're doing. (laughs) I was like, really? We didn't do it. I kind of wimped out, but I was like, we could just go hang out with them all day. <laughs> I uh, saw, 
I saw Joel yeah. two years ago, and I didn't do like the Walk of Fame, but I I wanted to, and I just kind of I have a problem like meeting people <laughs> that, that I uh, admire, um, so I didn't do it. I'm glad that you guys did. Yeah, well, it was weird because we just always walk around in there because it's just sort of like this weird like B-list celebrity zoo, and um, we actually walked up to them though and just started talking to them, and we didn't get an autograph or give them any money. <laughs> we were just like, "Oh, hey, what's up?" Because we had, we had gone to their panel, yeah, where they made they tried to defend their favorite worst movie and explain why they love it, even though it's horrible. <laughs> and so, like one of them did, what did they do? Dreamcatcher. Yeah, Dreamcatcher. Um, Something else. Titanic. Titanic. Was another yeah. one. Um, it was, and they did little. They made fun of them. They would play clips from it and talk over it and stuff. It was really great. And so we talked to them after that. I'm trying to figure out. Like I'm trying to think. Like how much? Because like I just defended their two million dollar goal, right? But when they first started on like public access. Thinking of, yeah. <laughs> you know, it probably wasn't two million bucks. Like, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know why it's that much. I really don't. I don't know why it's that much. I don't know why it's a hundred dollars to get like all the episodes that are produced. I think you can do like 25 bucks to get like the first one. I don't even know where they're going to, I don't even know where they're going to air. Yeah. I have no idea. I don't know if it's going to be like, um, or like an online store or something like that. They really, really do like their stuff because, um, I mean, it's all great stuff, but it's it's difficult because when they first started, it was all about, like, keep the tape circulating, you know, fucking record it and then, like, mail it to a friend kind of deal. Mm-hmm. And then now, like, I, I was like, yeah, I kind of want to, like, I want to own all of those. And then I, like, looked for them online and I found them and I was like, those are really, really expensive. They're really expensive. They're yeah. like, if you buy them online digitally, they're like 10 bucks an episode. Are- yeah, they're hard to find too. Like if you're trying to find cheaper methods of things, because I used to do. I would, uh, I got into the riff tracks too a few yeah. years ago, and those are so good, but they're hard to find. But you can find some people that will actually like sync it up for you, so you don't have to do it yourself. And it's like <laughs> the video and audio all together, and you can watch them like make fun of or listen to them make fun of like, yeah, all the Matrix movies and like Twilight and Titanic, and they're so funny. I did it with Harry Potter. I told Nikki, I was like, that, that's the, how I'll watch these movies that, yeah. that you love. Um, I'll watch them with Rift Tracks. Um, that's cool that you found somebody who has them like, synced up already because um, that was always like my biggest fear. Everything always worked out fine, but my fear was like it was difficult to enjoy it fully because I felt like every time they riffed, I was like, I don't know. That seemed like it was like half a second off. <laughs> well, I mean... Uh- I just happened to just. I was just curious, so I looked and I, I found a complete 135 gig download, 222 files for the complete Mystery Science Theater 3000 from the Mystery Science Theater 3000 store, right? Totally, yeah. totally. But, it's and it's yeah. free. Yeah. Is <laughs> <laughs> that Mr. Bay? Yeah, <laughs> Mr. Bay. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Kick Ass T, yeah, that's, that's where I'm at. That's what I was on earlier. Yeah. <laughs> there also, uh, there also a lot of them on YouTube. There's like a playlist of like 135 uh, of them. Okay, on, it's not all of them, but they've got a bunch of them on there. And the quality is awful, but they are there. <laughs> I definitely recommend watching at least the. There's a YouTube video, and it's like the best of riff tracks, and it's sort of just like a compilation. It's like five minutes long of just some of their best moments from all the riff tracks they've done. And even if you can't access an actual riff tracks or don't want to sync one up yourself, like just watch that YouTube video. I've watched it probably like 30 times. Some of the just like one liners that they drop on some of those movies are so good. I'll check but. it out. I haven't watched it. I, um, I've only watched a couple of movies and I wanted to do, cause like I know they've done riff tracks for like a bunch of the Marvel movies and I want to watch those, rewatch those with, with riff tracks over it. The one they did for the second matrix. I can't remember whatever that ridiculous matrix movie reloaded. was. Makes you just reloaded. God, I couldn't <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> my pants. It was some of the funniest, like the whole scene with I. God, it was just ridiculous. <laughs> just watch it, find it. I'll try and find it. Okay. I will find it. I'll ask Mr. Bay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, I'll, I'll text my friend Mr. Bay. <laughs> so uh, what's up, guys? Um, you guys are from a new podcast that you started, yeah? Yeah, yeah. We just started. Um, I'm trying to think of why how it started. 
I guess it was Bailey heard me on Paul Kluhl's, uh podcast, um, Loaded Cart Gaming. Mm-hmm. She saw me do that episode, and she was like, oh, my God, we need to do one right now. And then, yeah, we just bought a bunch of stuff and started recording. Yeah. It was basically just pure jealousy. I was just like, well, I want to do one. Well, <laughs> <laughs> That's not good. You could, yeah. well, he also just listens to podcasts all the time. Like, he has his earbuds in quite literally 24 hours a day. Like, when I go see him at work, he's, like, back there with his earbuds in yeah. listening to podcasts. Like, he goes to sleep <laughs> with his iPhone earbuds in listening to podcasts. I don't know how he does it. I can't do that. And, I've thought uh, about it. There's Isn't there, like... Okay, I might be mixing some things up. Isn't there like a pillow or something where that has audio jacks on it and you can like... I've seen that, Okay, yeah. so that's yeah. a real thing. Mm-hmm. I've Lay on it. Don't yeah. move. Don't turn side <laughs> yeah. to side or you're going to get blasted on one end. And then... <laughs> yeah. But some of the best times I had working in a restaurant were when I could just go back to the back. I had, and had a prep list, put in my earbuds and just listen to books and podcasts for nonstop for a full eight hours and just and just do prep. I yeah. can't. I can. Uh, yeah. I very rarely have. Even though I, I work in a job where you think I would, I rarely have moments where I can. I kind of am always like yeah. in front of people and then yeah, I don't have like a, I can't hide away and do it. And I've even told my bosses, I was like, I wish I could just like when I'm on. I, I work in a coffee shop, by the way. And I was like, when I'm actually like on the machine, yeah. Like I don't really need to talk to anybody. Just somebody can like hand me what the order is, and I can just like <laughs> nod. Like, I get it. <laughs> And yeah, it's like audiobooks or podcasts or music. Yeah, no, those are my good days at work is when, yeah, I don't have to talk to anybody <laughs> or like, yeah, tell them what they're doing wrong. Like, it's mm-hmm. when I get to ignore all the employees that work for me. <laughs> I, I wear one earbud in my left ear and then keep, uh, keep my right ear clear so I can hear if like my, like the intercom beeps or something like that, which is, sounds great. But the problem is I've been doing it for like, 10 years so like now i can definitely hear better out of my right ear <laughs> than my left ear well i noticed i went to the doctor to, uh, like last week and i was like there's something wrong with my ear and like she was checking it out she's like do you wear a lot of earbuds yeah well it's pretty impacted your earbuds is pretty impacted down mm-hmm. in there so oh. like now because of the how much i listen to uh stuff with my headphones yeah now i have to now my doc drops in for a month and then i'll probably have to go in and get it like washed out by the doctors yeah. and shit like that so <laughs> so you guys bought a bunch of equipment and started your started your own thing bailey was it everything that you hoped it would be yes it is a good show you guys do a great show so Thanks. yeah i um I've learned a lot about how much I say um and like. <laughs> As a former English major, that's pretty... Sure. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I didn't realize. Like, you know, listening to yourself talk is really weird. And also, we talk over each other all the time. So I'm trying to be really quiet right now. So I'm really, like, really respectful of everybody. <laughs> <laughs> I think we all kind of feel that because it's like... Uh, there are moments when um, we're recording and then Tyler and I kind of like look at each other and just be like, all right, I guess one of us, should one of us say something? I guess, I guess I'll, I'll go ahead. It's kind of like that situation when like you're walking down a hallway and you're, someone else is coming towards you and you're both on the same side of the hallway and you do that thing where it's like, oh, I'm, I'm going to go left. Oh, you're going right. Okay. Okay. All right, and then you move and on. And somebody has to say, like, oh, shall we dance? And yeah, exactly. Like, oh, yeah. Or, we got to send meeting this way. <laughs> <laughs> Good dancing. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, do, you, do you guys like Jacob York of Wolf Fighting fame? I don't have a problem with him. Who? Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Uh, Jacob York, he's a friend of Tyler and Nate. Oh, he's I been on the show. A Did few I times. meet him? Yeah, he was at Dragon mm-hmm, Con. Mm-hmm. I, I'm not sure. Yeah, he was there when when you guys came off the when you had your elevator fiasco. Elevator incident. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he was a huge bitch, and I was like, "Your friend." Because I was in such a bad mood. I was like, I'm gonna be like nice girlfriend, but I was like not in a happy place at that moment. <laughs> what was great is you were telling me all this thing, like all this stuff, and I was just like. I don't know if she's legitimately angry or not. She <laughs> says she is, but like you were saying it in such a friendly tone. <laughs> <laughs> I've been, well, it was, I really, yeah, it wasn't that big of a deal. And I knew I was being dramatic, but I've been drinking. It was that girly thing where I was like, I've been drinking Evan Williams for like eight hours and <laughs> <laughs> an elevator. And then I was sitting in between where all the elevators are. There's like a little bench kind of where you can like sit and wait for the elevator. Uh-huh. And then it was really crowded. And then everybody went in the elevator and my arm almost got chopped off. 
Almost. <laughs> Happens <laughs> all the time. At the bottom of the elevator in the Hilton, just arms. <laughs> it's like a scene of, from Fallout, just arms. <laughs> It was so dramatic, and I was like, reaching for him, and the thing like closed on my arm, and then he just. And then I just, know. Like, and on me. I just. Said, oh, that no, face you I made as his doors were closing. <laughs> <laughs> so Drew, Drew made it on, and you did not. Yeah, yeah. and I sat yeah. there, and somebody walked by, and I was like, <laughs> I just looked at him, and I was like, I lost my boyfriend, and they were like, Yeah, I lost my boyfriend once too, and then just like, kept walking. <laughs> and I just like sat there weirdly, kind of drunkenly for about ten or fifteen minutes, and finally got on one of them and made my way to you and tried to be Joe the all <laughs> For anyone listening, um, getting an elevator at Dragon Con, catching an elevator at Dragon Con is a big deal. It's mm-hmm. a nightmare. Yeah, it's not just like as simple as it's like, I'll catch the next one. It's mm-hmm. more like, I'll get, I guess I'll get one, like one out of the next 10. Is it going up? Is it going down? Does it matter? <laughs> get on get it. on. <laughs> Yeah, and we can. We were having a debate because they kept going down and then coming back up, and it was the same people on it. And I was like, "No, we're we're going up. We're going to like the nineteenth floor. We've got to get one going up." But you can't get one going up. It has to go. They go down to the bottom, so you have to ride it all the way down and then all the way back up. And like he figured that out, and I was like, "No, no, no. I'm gonna get one on the way up." And but they were, <laughs> yeah. So it'll be full, and the, like it's full of people that go all the way down to the first floor and then all the way back up to whatever floor they need to be on. <laughs> So the doors would open. It would be like the same people, just like, "Hey, still on the elevator trying to." <laughs> and I don't like elevators, and those are like the open glass ones. Yeah. That I just like. Oh, I thought that was really disorienting because you like you're like it was like a rocket ship. You're like shooting. It was like the opening scene of like Bioshock Infinite, and I was just like flying. <laughs> 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 I didn't like it. I've I've noticed that Drew is eerily silent. Oh no no no. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm just I'm still enjoying Bailey that you said you know you know that you know like that girly thing where you just drink Evan Williams for eight hours <laughs> just that, just that you know stuff girls do. <laughs> I didn't mean to drink. Yeah. My, my mom just did that you know just her girly time. No, I mean like when you drink like a girl drinks she gets like overly emotional about stuff that's really not that. Big. <laughs> All right, I guess I should have said that I was drinking like whites and Vendel or something, but. That wasn't the case, unfortunately. I had Coke Zero with though. That's girly. <laughs> but I, I brought up Jacob just because the other day, well, yeah, I say the other day, probably like a few weeks ago, he was just like, huh, so Drew and Bailey live I mean, pretty close to Atlanta. Not, not a long drive. He's like, no, no, they don't. He's like, hmm, never been in one of my shows. <laughs> and I was like, oh, okay. Well, I'll address that at some point in time. Had he been drinking Evan Williams all day? <laughs> He's not a girl. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he was emotional. Yeah. <laughs> Doesn't he? Did he move or something? He, he was in Nashville for a bit. He did a show in yeah, Nashville. So, so this is this is me doing some awkward on air promotion directly <laughs> where you guys should go see one of Jacob's shows. I, yeah. What's what's playing right now? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I'll go. <laughs> There's one ticket sold. Are, they, are you getting a cut, yeah. Tyler? <laughs> no, just just spread the good word, of Jake York. <laughs> That's fair. As long as there's any elevators involved, then <laughs> I'll do it. <laughs> you guys want to talk about some Fallout? Yeah. Yeah, I think so. I think it's mainly going to be you talking about Fallout, Mister Forty Nine Hours. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm not that far for Forty Nine <laughs> Hours. Are you doing what I'm doing, like? And stripping everything. Yeah. Yes, that's yeah. what I've been, I just recently got into that because that's yeah. a new thing in Fallout 4. Mm-hmm. In all the Fallout, well, I say all the Fallout games, in Fallout 3 in New Vegas, I collected a whole bunch of junk that meant absolutely nothing. A Braxo cleaner. <laughs> got it. That turpentine, that's fucking heavy. <laughs> Pass me that plunger. Now I'm like, oh, Braxo. Yeah. Oh, good. Antiseptic. Yeah, because all this stuff breaks down now mm-hmm. and you can craft with it, which is amazing they took like i can i could see like looking back new vegas the crafting was like this uh crafting in its infancy and then Mm -hmm. in fallout 4 they were like let's take this idea and like actually make it so you're constantly wanting to craft things yeah do we do our uh, david's and wikipedia for fallout 4 we can or i can just um i can just talk about it okay i can just give you the facts uh it came out (laughs) it came out this year bethesda did it it's pretty fun okay Next, <laughs> <laughs> I can do that. I need to. I need to pull it up. I'm ill prepared. I have uh, zero notes because 
every free moment that I've had since this game came out, I have been playing this game, um, which isn't a whole lot of free moments. So that means our next eight shows are just Fallout 4 because we don't want to play anything else. Yeah, I don't know. I really don't know what we're going to do about that. <laughs> I worried about the our show, too, because our, well, quick plug, our next episode is going to be also a Fallout 4 episode. <laughs> but, yeah, I mean, I feel like this is going to take up a lot of my time, and then I'm not going to have anything else to talk about. Yeah, yeah you're just, just 400 hours. It'll just take up 400 hours of your time. That's not a big deal. There, yeah, there's no way that I'm going to be <laughs> done with this game in less than like 400 hours. I know there's no way that you're going. I mean, yeah. I'm probably going to reach a point where it's like, okay, I'm done. Because like, well, I was talking to Sean McElwain about it, and he was telling me, he was like, I wanted to play it like like I was really the player. Like I'm after, I'm trying to get my son back. That's the priority. So like he went and done like primary mission, primary mission, like, 50 hours, I just made it to Diamond City. So. <laughs> what I, when I started, I told myself that same exact thing. I said, man, because like the opening has such a huge impact. Uh, I felt like the opening was really cinematic. It kind of goes back to Fallout 3 and its whole like cinematic feel. Mm-hmm. And um, once, your, once your baby is stolen, it was just like, uh, that's, what, that's it. That's all I'm doing. I'm going to, going to go find the baby. Everything's going to, I'm going to do that. And then I left the vault, and it was just kind of like I don't know, just kind of like toddled around. And then here's my old house. <laughs> okay. I it up. <laughs> I did. I was like, oh my god, this is a mess. I gotta clean it up. <laughs> <laughs> and then I got completely distracted um, by the Minutemen who wanted my help, mm-hmm. and um, I was like, okay, well, I got I got time to do one mission for you guys. <laughs> I could do one mission, and then I got that mission done. I was like. Well, I mean, clearly they need my help, so I'll just follow them around for a little bit. That old drug addict lady. I feel bad for her. (laughs) Right? Okay, guys. I do have um, Fallout 4 pulled up on Wikipedia. Um, Tyler, do you hear that? Yeah, that is... Stolen Baby Train. Stolen stolen, stolen Baby Train. (laughs) Just the wails of all of the infants who are probably... I don't know. I'm not going to tag this with spoilers because I don't know. Are probably full grown adults now <laughs> by the time you meet them in the game. That's my guess. My guess is you're going to find somebody in the game. You're not going to know that it's Sean, your baby. And then later on, it's going to be like, oh, it's Sean. That's, that, that's okay. That's what I thought too because you don't know how yeah. much time has passed. But yeah. But that's not the case. Baby's dead. I don't know. <laughs> okay. I, I don't know. See, the, I, I can't spoil that because I okay. don't know yet. I'm just throwing out theories. Other theory is um, I got this. Kyle on Steam sent me this message when I was playing Fallout 4. He said, uh, spoilers, Sean is dog meat. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yes, I do hear the wailing stolen infant train, which, of course, ushers in a segment that we like to call Dave Reads from Wikipedia. Okay, guys. Fallout 4 is an open-world action role-playing video game developed by Bethesda Game Studios and published by Bethesda Softworks. The game is the fifth major installment in the Fallout series and was released worldwide on November 10th, 2015 for Microsoft Windows, PlayStation 4, and Xbox One. Um, It is set in a post-apocalyptic Boston 200 years after a devastating nuclear war in which the player character emerges from an underground bunker known as a vault. Uh, Gameplay is similar to Fallout 3. Completing quests and acquiring experience levels up the character, allowing for new abilities. Uh, With an optional first or third person view, players can explore Fallout's 4 open world setting at will, allowing non-linear gameplay. Some of that fine non-linear gameplay I was just talking about where I'm just going to leave my baby to die in the wasteland <laughs> while I fuck around with some colonials. <laughs> <laughs> I got to build, I got to plant some tatoes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, baby. <laughs> Sorry, baby. I got to, I got to build a bed. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Before we delve deeper, I'd like to go ahead, start, sort of baseline, start out. Each of us talk about character creation who we made, what our what our outline our plan was. Okay. So let's let's have our guests go first. Sure. Okay. Um, once I realized that they stole my baby, I was uh, gonna. Go- I pretty much kept like the same guy, like the default guy. I think I just threw a beard on him, 
<laughs> I got it. It's fair. I, I approve. <laughs> yeah, like, but I was like, all right, I'm going to kill everybody until I get my baby back. But, <laughs> <laughs> your guy's so, like, jovial when he talks to people. It was, like, really hard to stay in character. And I was like, oh, I guess I'm going to help these colonials now. Yeah. And so, yeah, now I'm just doing, yeah. But I'm mostly doing uh, melee for the most part. Like, I thought that was, like, a big approach to this game I was going to try out that I don't normally do in Fallout. Mm-hmm. And that's been really fun, especially after I found a really special weapon. What is it? Yeah, what did uh, you find? Oh, I found, um, uh, uh, there's the comic in the game, Grognak. Yes, yes, I got this too. I found <laughs> Grognak the Barbarian's Battle Axe. Oh, it, that's how you got that. Okay, because I yeah. saw you walking around the battle axe. I was like, I just have a little switch. <laughs> and, and his, <laughs> and his like, loin cloth, which is like really good armor and like booster strength. The loin cloth? Yeah. Oh, I, didn't, I missed the loin cloth. Shit. It's, it's in that same building, the Hubris Comics mm. thing. Um, you also find like another good outfit like the silver shroud outfit I, I got that i know i can't drop it it's for a quest so i can't put it back in my storage i have no idea where to get the quest so i can get it done with but is yeah. it heavy i hope it's like 80 pounds it's it's like it's like five pounds okay. which is, it's just That's it's enough, a, it's to enough annoy you. yeah <laughs> yeah just give it to the dog make but, the dog here i can't it can't be removed from my inventory mm. But yeah, uh, it's like but super, okay. no, I've been using that battle axe because that thing is awesome. Yes, you know, that's, that's when I started using melee as well. When I got that, and by uh, give it to your dog, I think you mean just cram it somewhere inside your dog <laughs> because I don't know how he carries all the things I give him because it's just like, here's a broom, I don't know. Good luck. Because <laughs> I wish he had like a dog backpack, nope. or you can find dog armor. In oh, it, yeah, that's like, not DLC. You see. Uh, <laughs> Because I see other those wild mutant dogs running around. They have like the attack muzzles yeah. and like dog armor and spike collars and like. Yeah. But no, it actually I, doesn't have any armor value. You can't put it on your dog. Put goggles on them. That's it's pretty. so cute. <laughs> <laughs> like super derpy, and he just has like, like they don't even look like goggles. They just look big. <laughs> hey, wait, are you are you? You're not even joking. You could really put goggles on them. Yeah, 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 you can. Yeah, you can, and that's the other thing with your companions. You can equip them with anything, mm-hmm. pretty much. Like if you don't like their outfit, you can take that off and give them something else, or just take it off. I <laughs> want the uh, I want the dog meat corgi mod. I'm gonna have to keep a look look out for that. <laughs> what did you name your character, Drew? Uh, Drew. <laughs> 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 Which Codsworth won't say. He won't say it. No. But he'll say Andrew, but he won't say Drew. I can't believe he won't say Drew. Yeah. Shocking. He'll say, like, fuckface, right? But he won't say Drew. <laughs> fuckface and boobies. <laughs> he, he also won't say Sean. I found that out. Like, you can name, your son's name is Sean, but if you name your character Sean, not, <laughs> not, not something anybody Sean? will say. Never heard of him. Sorry. <laughs> There's only one Sean. <laughs> That's weird. Mm-hmm. Bailey, what about you? Okay. Uh, well, I tried to make my character look like me, which is always awkward, but that's what I attempted. So you know. How much time did you spend doing that? Uh, <laughs> like, <laughs> you know, like thirty year minutes. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just curious because like I've been there before, where it was and like. And even if I'm not trying to make them look like me, I'm just trying to make. I spend. I love character creation, and yeah. they the way they did it with this game was really cool. Yeah. So, and I enjoyed it a lot. I didn't realize that you could change both characters, though. I thought you just like if you want to. So I wanted to be the female character because I always do that. And I was editing her face and changing her face. And then I didn't realize you could also change your spouse, even mm-hmm. though I mean they, you know, spoiler alert, die like five minutes later. But you <laughs> I can. Know. I, I didn't know that, and I was like, oh, I would have made him look. Like somebody else, I guess. I don't know. I guess <laughs> I get maybe like Drew. I don't know. Somebody else. <laughs> anybody. <laughs> I mean, like Tom Hardy or something. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I felt a little like, I, I don't know if they did that on purpose where it's like, okay, well, they can make their spouse look however they want just so they get attached to them. So we'll kill them. Because <laughs> like, <laughs> I did because I spent like 30 minutes on both. And then like it, it happens, like your spouse dies and it's like, oh, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> Exactly how I found out that you could do that is because I read an article online. I don't know if it was the Nerdist or something like that that I follow on Facebook, and they posted somebody had written an entire piece 
about how much they love the character creation, but how much it fucked with them because they spent so much time creating their spouse mm. and they're like, like, you're talking to each other. The characters are talking to each other like, oh, I love your beautiful eyes. <laughs> and, like, and then they die. And it's like, oh, I made that person in my, like, in the image that I want them to be. And then they murdered them. Mm-hmm. So I didn't do that though. So I was like, didn't care at all when the guy got shot. I guess. <laughs> I do want to. I want to see your character, Bailey, just so I'll know like where your level of self esteem is at. So like, is it going to be a thing? We'll be like, oh no, you're, you look better than that, or somebody thinks highly of themselves. Just to see see where the gauge is if you're trying to make it look like you. It's also like the idealism too, where like when they, you can do the body type little triangle, and you always kind of like go to the. Uh, I like I always go to the pudgier end, and then I'm like, oh. I'm just going to go back in a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know that was a thing. Yeah, it's a thing. You can change the body type. Man, I am thoroughly impressed. Like, there are so few games that let you do that. And yeah. they, like, they got away, they got rid of sliders, which I think is awesome. Yeah. Oh, because I hate, that's so annoying. Yeah. And so that's what I liked about this one is, I mean, you're literally, it's almost like molding their face. Like, literally, like yeah, uh, the sliders are annoying. I don't like that. So, um, but yeah, so that's what I did. And when it came to actual character type, Yes, like personality. Uh, I always get really stressed out with that, and I don't know where to go. And because there's so many directions you can take it, I get kind of overwhelmed. I mean, Drew was like with me, and I was like, I don't know what to do, like where to put my skill point. So I'm trying to go. I don't know. I, I, I like intelligence and like science based, so I can like craft. I like. I'm really enjoying the crafting and the modding things out. So. Uh, uh, a lot of points into guns because I'm a horrible shooter. So mm-hmm. as much extra damage as I can get because I'm a horrible shot, and then just modding things out to make them stronger because I'm a horrible shot. But that's I don't know. I guess that's it. I, I haven't gotten that far. I'm like you. I've I've spent a majority of my time fixing up my town. Mm-hmm. And like I mean, I'm talking. Yeah, I don't know how many hours I have, but I would say probably like seventy percent of them have been doing that, and the other thirty percent has been doing side quests. It's a whole other game. Like. Like, that is a game in itself. No, that's what I was yeah. saying, because I, I actually had thought, and I was like, no, well, that's really stupid, and I thought about getting the new Animal Crossing, like, Happy Home Designer. Uh-huh. So dumb. Like, I love Animal Crossing to death, but, like, I don't want to do just that. And Me- started- Meg said that, too. She loves Animal Crossing, but just couldn't fathom that being all she did. But, like, this, in this version of doing something like that, or like you're like yeah salvaging things yeah. and like rebuilding them and like trying to make a home out of scraps <laughs> but like cleaning things like I had a really 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 bad day at work on Friday morning and Drew was at work like he was working a double so I had the PlayStation to myself and I knew I was going to sit and just play the game all day and instead of doing any questing he came home and I was still sitting on the couch and I'd been there for like two or three hours and all I had been doing was walking around and scrapping things in sanctuary <laughs> and it was just like so like zoned out and it was really therapeutic for me to just walk around yeah. and be like scrap it, scrap it, scrap yeah. it. <laughs> I get it. I do, I get it. And then like walking through town again and being like, I can't believe I missed that tire. Scrap it. <laughs> <laughs> Did you find the root cellar with the gold bars in it? What? See, no. I, I didn't find it either. Even I, after you texted me about it, it yeah. I didn't find it. What I just happened it? to like I mean <laughs> I felt like I went through Sanctuary Hills with a fine tooth comb, but somehow I missed it until I had dog meat, got another companion that I had to accept. So sent dog meat back to Sanctuary Hills. But I was like, okay, I don't like this new companion. I want dog meat back. Went back trying to find dog meat. Yeah. Because he goes to random dog houses in Sanctuary Hills. <laughs> and you can't summon him either. Like, there's like, you can create and put a bell in your town, ring it, and all the NPCs come running. But dog meat won't. So, like, <laughs> I was just going through the town, just like, where the fuck are these dog houses? Where is dog meat? I'm sick of this companion. And then that's when behind a house at the end of the cul-de-sac, like, I just happened to be mousing over and then saw a word pop up for a second, went back, root cellar, okay? Went down and somebody had built a impromptu bomb shelter underneath their house where they had, like, supplies and stuff like that and they yeah. just random-ass gold bars were 450 caps apiece just Damn. in the root cellar. Is this back behind, like, the creek? Air, like the wooded area back where the creek is or it's before that it's just like at the end like there's one house where Cods, uh Codsworth were like search yeah a scrapped house and like another house yeah, at the end of the yeah, yeah. it's one of those I know what I'm doing as soon yeah. as we're done recording <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna get me some gold bars <laughs> 
calling dibs on the PlayStation. Oh, I'm going to catch the laundry that's in the dryer, and I'm going to go find those gold bars. Because <laughs> I was surprised because I was like, I've only ever seen gold bars before in a Fallout in uh, Sierra Madre. That's right. it. So yeah. it's like, why would this guy has like fancy lad snack cakes and gold bars? <laughs> these will be good after the apocalypse. I'm going to put these down here. Yeah. It'd be like those commercials you see on TV where they're like, you know, send the, you know, we'll send you silver. <laughs> <laughs> gold never uses its value. Invest Buying in gold. gold. Buying gold and snack cakes. Your pick. <laughs> Ron Swanson's form of currency: gold bars. <laughs> so, what are you guys? Uh, what are you guys playing this on? On PlayStation or PS4? Yep. yep. PS4. Okay. Yep. So this is yeah something I just wanted to sit in the living room and play. Yeah, and he you had pre-ordered the. Pit Boy edition. Oh, so yeah. We have the Pit Boy. Yeah. yeah. Did that come with a game? We, we yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah version. I question heard. solved. Okay. Because <laughs> there is one version from Bethesda that did not come with the game. Just an expensive collection of bottle caps and stuff. So. <laughs> I was talking about that on the last episode, and I was trying to figure out what that was. Because yeah, we pre-ordered like it's the game collector's edition of the game that comes with the Pit Boy. Yeah, yeah that, that would you be, can put your be cell phone into and. Which, if you're not using the mm. Pip app on your phone, like that is a time saver. Mm-hmm. Like, really? Tell me yeah. about that. I don't. I don't even know about it. So it's basically instead of yeah, just having to pull up the Pip Boy every time, you can just have your phone sitting out with the map, like ready to go, and so you can see all the quests and stuff you want to go, and you can just tap on that. It's an exact replica yeah. of like what the screen of the Pip Boy looks like, or like on your phone. Or that's if awesome. You're, or if you're trying to look at like the different outfits instead of having to go back into the thing, look at something and see if that looks, you know, good on you. Uh huh. <laughs> try it on. You know, I don't want to. No, I get it. <laughs> <laughs> sit there, like, look at your character in third person and sit there and just select all the different things, and you can just see how everything looks on you. Yeah. And it's yeah, and it's really quick and it's easy. Because you're supposed to be able to put your phone into the Pit Boy that you get with the collector's edition. Uh-huh. And do- but like, I mean, even if you don't have the Pit Boy to wear on your arm, like really awkwardly while you're yeah. playing, you can just still have that app on your phone. For- That's awesome. Is yeah. it just called mm. just called P- the Pip app? Yeah, yeah. Pip app. Pip, Pip <laughs> app. Boy app. Yeah, it's it's good. So I'm gonna get some gold bars when I go home, and I'm gonna download this app because that sounds amazing. Yeah. Tyler, what are you what are you playing as? Oh, normally in Fallout, I don't know why they started in Fallout Three. I just randomly did it. Uh, that I decided to play an Asian lady. Right. <laughs> I mentioned that before. And so I think Asian lady named Charisma, just because Charisma was my favorite stat. Yeah, you like that, Billy? <laughs> <laughs> and then Charisma Carpenter is like my, my number one. So She's a porn Charisma, star. No, yeah. Charisma Carpenter. Wait. No. From no. Buffy. From Buffy. <laughs> Vampire story. <laughs> it does sound like a stripper's name, though. To be fair, I think she was named after a perfume. She's so. a chick from Buffy, right? Yes. Is that her real name? Like that is mm-hmm. like that's on a birth certificate. That's her somewhere. Christian name. Yes. Okay. And her character's name was Cordelia. Cordelia, because in Fallout New Vegas, I played an Asian lady named Cordelia, so I had to continue the continuity there. Right. And one, I think I don't know why I wanted to play a woman. I think partially it was because. The Black Widow perk is way more useful than Lady Killer because there's a lot more men to yeah, kill. Yeah, you just deal. Yeah. You just deal with more men. Yeah, like mm-hmm. I guess Fallout is somewhat sexist in that way because yeah, you just as a lady you're gonna have way more you know advantage with that going that route. So, yeah. And then in Fallout Four, I was like, okay, I'll keep this up. And, okay, and this sentence out of context is going to sound weird and racist. <laughs> so this is within the context of my character creation. I was about to say you don't want, you don't want to put it in context first. <laughs> so, I'm so racist, but <laughs> <laughs> when I was looking through the character creation to the like the auto you know all the pre gen faces and saw what I could work with, I didn't like the look of the Asian lady in Fallout Four. Okay, so. But I did like the look of the black lady. Uh-huh. So I decided, okay, I'll mix it up a little bit. I'll be a black lady in Fallout Four, and. I wanted to be a name that you can name anything, but only there's a list of acted out names that will actually, they'll say it back to you. Right. And I knew, I was like, oh, well, one, okay, I'm playing a, a black lady. So what's a name that's on this list that I think will work with this character? Okay, River. 
because the entire like the cast of Firefly are all names you can choose that they'll say. And I was like, River, Black Lady, River Song. Okay, there, done, boom. So I'm I'm Fallout Four, Black Lady named River. And it drives me nuts in a Fallout game when I can't get into something. So like. I maxed out. I put a lot of points into charisma, mm-hmm. and then as I leveled up, that's the first thing I maxed out was charisma all the way. And then I have to do make sure I have plenty of lock picking and hacking for the science terminals. So those are my three, always my three big priorities because I don't like not being able to take a speech option for something cool. Right. And I took Black Widow, uh, so I can get. So far, I liked. I, I guess they do it different. Either I haven't gotten to use it yet. Or they do it differently in Fallout 4. What I liked whenever you used Black Widow in the other games... I thought it was just a damage bonus. Is that not right? You also unlock unique dialogue options when dealing with some men. Oh, okay. Okay. But in the other games, it would say, like, it would pop up a new line with brackets at the end, Black Widow. Like, this is why you get this option. Okay. I like that it designated, like, certain perks that you had, and they would visibly... you, You can see this option because of this. Right. But... So far, I haven't seen... That hasn't been the case in Fallout 4. Either it's just... They just make it an option, don't tell you why, or I haven't gotten one yet. I don't know. It might be like Persuade, where it's like you get an option that's color-coded based on your chance of success. Yeah. And so, it, you might just get an extra option and not know it. Because like whenever see, I... I, w- I wish I did know it. Yeah. But yeah, it might be like... I mean, yeah, I might just not know. Either that or it is... Um, they've just forgot to program it in. <laughs> yeah, like, like that Shining Armor perk. <laughs> right. Yeah. Um, when you were talking about the names really quick though because you said uh, your character is a black lady and I got really excited because Drew sent me the list of all the names that Codsworth can say Mm -hmm. and the very very first name like alphabetically on the list is Aaliyah like the singer Uh (laughs) really excited and then like really bummed out that I didn't name my character Aaliyah (laughs) <laughs> so did you? I thought you were like, man, Lee would be so happy. <laughs> oh wait, mwah, mwah. <laughs> 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 or I did like nine. But. Were you like me and like didn't even know that was a thing until like two hours into the game? Because that's what I. What's what happened to me is like I played a little bit and I was like, oh, I'm gonna take a break. And I looked online. I was like, oh seriously, you could name your character something that <laughs> they'll actually read back to you. That's amazing. Unfortunately, uh, Roscoe is not one of those names because that, that is what I yeah. named my character. I, I only knew about it because um, Cody Stinson had posted on Facebook about it. Yeah. Otherwise, I would not have known before I started. I tried to do this. Like, I tried to go into Fallout 4 knowing as little as possible. Like, it, I tried to avoid, like, I watched the trailer and that's it because, like, I couldn't not watch the trailer. I had to watch mm-hmm. the trailer. Uh, but, like, everything else, I kind of just tried to stay away from. And then my goal was like, okay, well, then when it comes out on Tuesday, I'll just um, read a whole bunch of stuff. But what I didn't think about was I'll be too busy playing the game to read stuff about the game. (laughs) (laughs) So uh, that kind of that plan kind of backfired. What about your character, Dave? I'm playing um, just the blandest ass white man named Roscoe. Uh, He doesn't he doesn't even have a beard. (laughs) Um, I thought about like recreating myself, but I remember doing that in Tiger Woods 2004 and getting really depressed about it. So I decided to just make a handsome man instead. Uh, so I did that and I, um, I went total into like, High intelligence. I went high intelligence mm-hmm. because I did not realize that the skill system had I changed. Did, I didn't know either. It's still beneficial to have high yeah. intelligence, but yeah, I did. I did my stats like I did on three in New Vegas. Like, yeah, but it does not work like that. It doesn't work like that, right? Exactly. So what happened was, um, when when I level up the first time and I like go to like, I was like, oh, I got a perk, awesome, and I pull up, I pull it up in the pit boy, and it's like, oh, perks have replaced the skill system. Ooh. Okay, I didn't like it at first because I had built the character to abuse the skill system. Yeah. Um, but then after a few levels, I was like, actually, this is this is pretty nice. I yeah. like I like this instead of just being like every level being like, all right, click 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 click. There's there's my five points <laughs> in lock picking. Great. Uh, now it actually feels like it's more organic yeah. and robust. I yeah. like that. Um, so I feel like charisma is still. Is still pretty powerful because it's not broken down into persuasion perks. Like 
every bit of persuasion is just based off your charisma score. Yeah. So if you really want any dialogue options, not all the charisma ability, like the perks in that tree, are super effective. It just uh-huh. depends on how you want to play. But like, you need to have your charisma score maxed out if you want any any dialogue options at all. Yeah. Well, I have a pretty everything else besides intelligence is pretty average. Um, so every now and then I get like a persuasion attempt that I can make. I'm not the kind of, I guess I'm just not the kind of player who like gets upset that I'm going to miss something in, mm-hmm. in dialogue. But for some reason I am the kind of person that like when I walk into a building and it has an expert safe and I can't unlock it, Ooh. I get, I get annoyed because it's yeah. like, I will forget that this thing is here. I've done that so <laughs> many. I started writing them down. But I know I've forgotten several before I even started writing down locations. Yeah, I've That's ran into a lot of yeah master yeah lock yeah. saves. I'm like because uh, I found some power armor just like in a cage in like the middle of the woods, but I couldn't unlock it because I didn't have a point in expert yet. Oh and man, he, he was like, "Where is that? Pull up the map." And he like remembered <laughs> like just looking at it. it was like, "Okay, so it's like northwest of this building." All right, yeah. got it. And then he logged. Don't just like, say building. <laughs> don't tell, <laughs> just don't tell write it down. Where. Building. <laughs> Big uh, auto shop. Thank you. Yeah, that I don't you kind of explore early on. The post apocalyptic <laughs> building. <laughs> Boston? Question mark. <laughs> it is weird that I have found like my my the garage in Sanctuary Hills looks like because I have four base exoskeletons for power armor and then my actual set hanging in the in the rig. But it just, just looks like this this weird mausoleum to <laughs> all these random ass power armors that I've just found in mostly random locations. I've yeah. I've killed some people and taken some, and then like others. Like there's another one I just found um, in a tr- in a truck out by uh, the federal Federal Reserve. Like raiders just were there, and I want, walked into a truck and just in the back of it, just standing there. Power armor. Sweet, okay, cool, and. Oh, yeah. Another one on a, a coastal town, like in one of the buildings, like in the middle of a bunch of fucking super mutants, though, like there was another one just standing there. Uh, I'm uh, since I'm all intelligence based, I think and I've looked through all the perks. I think that I'm going to take the nuclear physicist uh, perk, mm-hmm. which allows me to extend the use of fusion cores. Uh, so my goal. I love that mechanic. I yeah. love it so much. Because, yeah, that's what the power armor runs on. Mm-hmm. It like actually requires fuel it makes sense and i love it so you can't just want to run around in it forever uh but with the nuclear physicist it's got three ranks and i think like with the first two ranks you extend it by like a hundred percent so you can stay in there for a long time yeah that's what i was gonna work towards as well with the power armor modding and stuff yeah i've been doing the shit out of crafting like i like the power armor but i haven't like Looked into like extending the fusion cores. Like I don't, I only roll around in it when I need to. Yeah, the problem with me is like I'm always like, Ooh, do I need it for this? And it's like, <laughs> what happens is like when I go on a Brother of Steel mission and like they're in power armor, it's like, fine, I'm gonna get mine. I'm gonna go get mine and come back. Dance. Why are you always in this power armor? How many <laughs> fusion cores are you going through? <laughs> Jesus. He's a nuclear <laughs> physicist. Oh. A wasteful. He could take it off every now and then. <laughs> he has no body, actually. He's just he's just a head. His head survived the nuclear <laughs> apocalypse. When they're just like in the like police station where they hang out, like their little home base, isn't he just like even inside? Uh-huh. Like, yeah, just walk around power. Armor. <laughs> yeah, I, he, he even does this little um, animation. Like I love when you leave for the quest. He like pulls his helmet out and like kind of tosses it up and catches it yeah. and puts it on. I was when he did that the first time. I was like, please drop it. Please draw. This would be like an amazing moment in a video game if, like, an NPC is about to like try to do something cool and just completely fumbles it and doesn't say anything and just like bends over and picks it up and just puts it on and walks out. (laughs) We were talking about it at dinner today. Speaking of that character, though, and I knew that it wasn't this person doing the voice, but I think that it sounds exactly like George Clooney, whoever does the voice for Pilot and Dance. that just me that he i mean i was like i know it's not because yeah, there's right. no fucking way that george clooney could do <laughs> a size character in this video game let alone probably any character in this video game um but yeah I, it's some guy i don't know some voice actor yeah. random but i think he sounds just like george clooney to the point that I was like should i look this up i don't know it's some guy corge glooney 
I don't know. Gorge <laughs> Clooney. <laughs> I didn't. I didn't notice that, Bailey. But now I'm never going to be able to unhear it when I hear him speak. Maybe it's just me. I don't know. No, and no. It had, yeah, when I finally looked up the name, I was like, "Oh, I don't know you at all." But like, he's. Yeah. I don't know, know you, Mister Glooney. <laughs> like that. Awesome. I've spent so many of my my 49 logged hours though doing all just that the endless amount of quests for the Brotherhood of Steel, right. going okay. clearing out locations and finding tech and establishing new settlements or checking on settlements for the Minutemen. Like I did that that finally like after I did those each like 20 times and it was like I'm not getting any new quests. Okay, now now I guess I'll go forward with the main quest line. <laughs> Yeah. So I'll check my son. <laughs> yeah. I guess I'll check on my son. <laughs> yeah, that one year old I was looking for. He's dog mean. I already told you that. He's with you the whole time. <laughs> if that's the twist at the end of the game. <laughs> <laughs> or like that's his hidden inventory. He just, <laughs> and then shot the baby comes out. Comes out. Yeah. <laughs> There's this, because I built up, because of that, I have a ton of settlements out. And I've maxed up my charisma. So I went ahead and put two ranks into a local leader. So I could run supply lines. Yeah. Because the thing that's frustrating is like wherever you break down equipment, as that that's where it stays. Right. So I just made sure I, I always went back to Sanctuary Hills to break stuff down. Uh-huh. I do and the same. Then, because I just I don't know. I gotta get so into armorer was probably the first stuff I started putting ranks into armorer and then science for the high tech and then gun nut and then now blacksmith. Like I really love modifying and scrapping and building all the equipment. Yeah. Uh, now I just today I started working with power armor. I thought that was really cool, upgrading the models and different kind of paints and plating and shit like that. You can do uh-huh. very. I really enjoyed that. But what a local leader does is you could take a person in your city and make them run supply lines. So then now all my other settlements are all linked to Sanctuary Hills. So I have my full stock everywhere, which is nice. And the second rank now I can open up stores. I've opened up one, but yeah, I do that. no matter how many times like I sign people, like they're never there when I need them to be. Supposedly they'll it, it'll make you money at some point. That's what I was gonna ask. Yeah, what does it make you money, or does the, it just give you a really place expensive. to sell stuff? You can yeah, you can sell stuff. And they have like two hundred, three hundred caps at any you know given time, but most of the time when it comes to, I guess I don't know how spoilery this is, but I made a. Judgment call just because I didn't want to fight the city, but there's this one small town that has these big walls around it. You have to take like this test that's equivalent to the what's that test on Blade Runner? Oh, uh, the Void Comp. Void, yeah, it's sort of like that. Uh-huh. So they can determine if you're a good person or not, unless you into the city. It starts with the C. I can't remember what it is, but they all seem kind of strange. There's a bounty hunter in there. He's like, people seem weird. I don't know what's going on, and come to find out, like. They're developing a working on developing a technique to be able to tell synths, yeah, which are basically Cylons from normal people. Like, I love this game, but it did just straight, straight one hundred percent fucking rip off Battlestar Galactica, like one hundred percent. I keep but, calling it Cylons every time I yeah. talk to you about the game. I'm like, oh yeah, that's Cylon. And <laughs> yeah, I haven't seen it, so like they just they look they look the same, or like so, what's what's similar about them? Cylons, that's their thing because they were robots androids artificial intelligence that we made uh-huh. and you could tell the difference and then like they disappear for 50 years after we go to war with them and whenever they resurface they there's no discernible way to tell them apart from humans so like they, they start, were like giant tin cans and then when they like disappeared and then came back it was like yeah super synthetic yeah, so you okay. never know who you never know who at any point in the series well, is a Cylon Harkness in Fallout 3 is a synth right the the guard at essentially the, yeah the it, that's that's shipyard. when they do mention the institute yeah yeah and he doesn't even know that he was right right yeah I thought that was really cool because that was like and when it happened when I encountered synths in Fallout Four I was I I had a point of reference where I was like oh they didn't just pull this out of their ass they actually mentioned this yeah. like games this is ago. part of the lore yeah. like overall yeah and but they're developing a way to be able to like because apparently they've figured out some questions that make them have a a noticeable response so they can tell if they're a synth or not. Okay. But in order to do this, they're having to like torture and like do horrible things to real people 
So like then you have to like I go in and I kill everybody in that base that because they attack me, and then you find the scientist who's just like explains it to you, just like if you kill me, this all the work that we've done, even at the cost of this suffering, ends now. Uh huh. And I was like, oh well, okay, we're cool. Never go ahead, it's fine. And now the town loves me, and that's where Covenant, I think, is what it's called. And that's where that's where I go to sell and buy everything for the most part. Hmm. Because they have a the doctor right there, the shop right there. Yeah. And then yeah. I fortified it, ran a supply line, all good. But there is, like, as you as you go ahead and improve, like, their defenses, food, water, all that other kind of shit to your town, uh, the population will grow. And I noticed there was this new NPC. Like, I, my population went from, like, 10 to 11, I noticed, in Sanctuary Hills. So uh-huh. I was like, okay, good, I have someone to assign to food or whatever. I go there and check it out. And it's this woman named Trash Can Carla. I love her. Yeah, <laughs> the vendor. Well, I didn't know what she was. She was just like walking around, and I walk up to her. And she's like, "Fine, what? A, I know the drill, yeah. whatever." Like trash can, Carla. Okay, are you like the Oscar the Grouch of Sanctuary Hills now? <laughs> and then a dialogue, a uh, difficult dialogue option pops up. Like, fine, give me your caps. I was like, okay, fine. I did that. She's like, fine. Gives me fifty caps, and now won't talk to me. <laughs> <laughs> and just wanders around, wanders around my town. She won't do supply lines. She won't do it. I can't command her to do anything. She just walks around. I've run across her, and uh, she just, I just buy things from her because it's like now it's crazy. Also, because like now this junk has value to me. All mm-hmm. of a sudden, the traders are important, which yeah. is great because it's like I'll find, I'll be really excited when I find a tr- random ash trader in the wastelands. Because you have like, any adhesive? Do you have yeah, adhesive? How much go, is your yeah, adhesive? Exactly. <laughs> Leather, leather, leather. I need, I need some you. cork. I need some cork. You got some cork. You got a baseball in there? God, cork is so hard to find. Yeah. Cork and adhesive both. I feel like I find a lot of adhesive. Just like I just find like in, like I check all the they have the toolboxes. It's like I don't know. I feel like I haven't had an issue. I didn't know because I was when I first started playing. I was ignoring certain things, and I was like picking up things that I thought like oh yeah like a screwdriver sure uh-huh. a piece of wood yeah okay and then I was like a hot plate. Why well, don't need a hot plate? I don't need a hot Copper. plate. Copper. And then, yeah, but for the, um, and the circuitry, yeah, so, yeah. yeah. So I was just like, and then I went to go build something for the town. I think maybe the first time you go to maybe run power or do a power generator. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I can do this. Uh, and I needed it. And then we like looked it up and it was like, oh, you get it out of hot plates and telephones. And I was like, God, that's like the one thing I have. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. When I, uh, I was short of ceramic once. And since then, I've picked up every fucking coffee mug I have seen, whether I need whether I need it or not. Just like gotcha, that and no tolas exist in Sanctuary Hills. <laughs> I know. I don't. I don't think the coffee pots. Everybody must use their hands when they're drinking their hot <laughs> coffee. <laughs> <laughs> I, although I haven't fucked with it, and I wonder if there's achievements tied to them, like the games you can load and play in your Pit Boy or on any other computer. Or I built my own computer for the purpose of. I guess of running hollow tapes, but because they have the the donkey. Uh, first one I played was the, the Donkey Kong version of for Pip Boy. No, I haven't seen that. I got like the yeah. the Missile Command uh, Pip Boy game. I got I that one. I got that one too. There was another one like it's somewhere around Sanctuary Hills, but like in, in I know some one of the computers saw so ejected it and took it with me. It's called Red Menace, and yeah, I found yeah. it at the very beginning. But yeah, it's like Donkey Kong. I'm going to have to find... All right, three things I got to do when I get home. <laughs> you don't show notes, but you have notes from the show. <laughs> Where to find the stuff we're talking about? Uh, let's see. I can't believe Dave hasn't... Did you say you have never seen Battlestar Galactica? Um, well, it, I mean, do you really want me to talk about it? I'm kind of embarrassed about it because... Well, I- I should be like pushing out my glasses like, oh, you said you've never watched Battlestar. <laughs> yeah, well... Like, I got really like kind of worked up when I heard you say that. <laughs> no, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to. I didn't mean to um, raise your ire. The problem with it is, I always have a problem getting into shows that start with a two-hour movie. Mm. <laughs> and it's like I so I started watching it, and it was like two two-hour movies. I know, right? And it's like I, I got through like half of the first one, and I was like, "This is really boring," mm. <laughs> and I stopped watching. Um, if I could, like. I don't know. I, I'm, I'm going to say this. I was the same way about Doctor Who. Like, I, it took me forever to get into Doctor Who. And then once I did, I was like, oh, yeah, this is actually really good. Doctor Who is hard to start out on. Like, 
I just yeah. couldn't. I just couldn't get started on Battlestar Galactica. I just couldn't. Like I, it took me a, like as Wiley and Laura were on me for years about it, and like Meg and I started watching it together, and then like it became one of those things where like it's sometimes it's too heavy, so she doesn't want to watch it all the time. Whenever we do have time to sit down and watch TV together, so then it just is like I just didn't watch it at all for years, and then it was like okay, fine, I'm just gonna watch it by myself. Like months ago, like I finished it. You know, fairly recently, mm-hmm. right before Dragon Con or right after Dragon Con. One of the few series, like, man, there is not a lot of media in recent memory that has, like, made tears roll down my face. But Battlestar Galacta is one of them, the last episode. Dude, the last episode. And I, I watched that show all the way through. I think this is really embarrassing. I think, I definitely two times, I think three times. And I, the first time I watched the last episode, I was just like sobbing, just like an emotional reaction like I've never had. And then the second time I watched it, I got, I was like, I knew what's coming. I knew everything it's all about. And I got to the last episode and I was like, well, I know what's coming. So, you know, whatever. And then I just started sobbing again and I cried. <laughs> and like, I watched it, I was like, uh, yeah, that show's like really. Anyway, you talking about watching it three times just reminds me of Portlandia. That whole skit where they like they binge watch it. <laughs> we need more episodes. <laughs> Royal team more. Find him in the phone. Book. <laughs> I had some of my friends like track me down when that episode premiered. They're like, you have to watch the new episode of Portlandia. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm I'm gonna give it another go. I had honestly, I had the same problem. Sorry, Nicole. I had the same problem with Twin Peaks. Uh, that one was a hard one for me to get into because of the very long movie esque episode. I like my I like my TV shows to just be fucking TV shows. I'm I'm a very curmudgeonly old man in that regard. Well, I tried. I still like. I got halfway through season two. Like, because I wanted to watch it for Nicole because she loves it so much. But yeah. every every episode was a struggle for me. Every single episode. Twin. So, is that what you're talking about? Twin, Twin Peaks. Peaks. Yeah. yeah. I mean, after yeah, halfway through the second season though you're already kind of like know everything you need to know so it's like they kind of like you know the whole thing's like who killed her and then like you find out in the beginning of the second season i think or towards the middle of it and then it's like okay now what yeah (laughs) i basically really checked out when it took a supernatural turn then it's like oh okay that was there were some parts of battlestar galactica that that did that took on a religious tone it kind of turned me off a little bit but i just Weirded out when they were like play the Rolling Stone song at the end. And they were all like singing. Yeah, <laughs> that, that whole episode where they were like singing that Rolling Stone song, and I don't. I was like, okay. Did they have like a Bollywood moment or something? They're like, let's Americanize <laughs> Bollywood. It was it was weird, but um, actually, oh, okay, I have to say it. The same guy that did Battlestar Galactica is mm-hmm. the guy that does Outlander. So okay, I've seen I've seen that show as well. Meg was a sub of the books and loves the show, so I've. Watch yeah. that at the corner of my eye while I'm on Reddit. I just said the other day, I was like, I've made it three. We've had three full episodes of our podcast, and I've made it three full episodes without referencing Outlander. But I <laughs> for show <laughs> somehow find a way to bring up Outlander. So I feel like really, I feel like I can just like take a that's like a sigh of relief <laughs> to mention that. It doesn't count because it's on our show. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. I was like, I have to like mention that Outlander exists. <laughs> Otherwise, like, like, it's like a really big deal. Moving on. Okay, I'll, I'll bring it back to Fallout with that. I like that when I run into humans, I'm like, okay, good. I'm just having to fight humans. When you have to fight anything else that's not human, man, they made that they made that way more realistic and difficult. When you fight anything like the robots or the death claw or even the fuck I thought the Meyer lurks Meyer God <laughs> fuck man there's two Meyer lurks because you have to you know they're so hard to kill unless you get their underbelly they're, or their tiny ass heads yeah. yeah even then like have you fought a Meyer lurk queen no no god no that um, sounds awful my god because <laughs> one, one is storyline based that you have to do the other one I just fucking randomly ran into and it f- oh my god God, I died so many times before I gave up. Because I'm in the, I'm just, I'm trying to follow the freedom, uh, freedom, freedom trail in Boston, uh-huh. which is like a real thing. That's like this red brick trail that goes through and to all these landmarks and things like that. It's an actual quest in game to meet like a secret organization called the Railroad. So I'm trying to figure this out, running down, trying to see where the it connects, and you get these clues and this puzzle you have to decipher. 
and then I run past the Massachusetts State House. I'm like, okay, well, it's not on the path, but I don't know. I feel like there's probably going to be something in the Massachusetts State House. So I Please go in there. Please tell me it's the Meyer Lurk Queen. <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, I go I go in and this place is just fucking demolished. Like I see some dead raiders everywhere. Uh-huh. I'm checking on the computers <laughs> and it's cutting, like they're all cut in half. <laughs> a lot of them they're all fucked up. Yeah. And like all their they have moldy food set up, so it's like okay, it's been a while mm-hmm. since the whatever happened here. So I'm probably safe. <laughs> and then I was like, well, I mean, I don't, I'm not expecting anything like this just random ass house in Boston Commons that it's going to be much of anything. So I'm going through, I keep getting down, I'm taking all the terminals and it's like all this strife going on. Like It's like this one guy complaining about this coworker that he like he wants to ask out, but she doesn't like him and blah, blah. But the bathrooms are really starting to smell weird. And as I keep going down and finding more terminals, more people start talking about the bathrooms being smelling really fucked up. Uh-huh. And then that's when you get down to like the basement and it's just fucking mylark hell. <laughs> Cause they're, I mean, they're all over there and it's radiation and I'm like dodging them left and right and having to kill them. I'm running out of ammo. And then I find out like, I find the governor's computer and he talks about like moving all the state artifacts out of the basement. So I'm like, okay, there, there is a payoff down here then. Uh-huh. Okay, great. So then I'm going through, I'm almost out of ammo. I'm, 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 Half my hit bar is just radiation, which is another cool thing I, I like. Know, in this I like game, that new the new radiation that mechanic. It's not it, yeah. It takes away for every point of radiation you take. It takes off your max health as right. opposed to being a different random score that can kill mm-hmm. you and weaken you. So I like that a lot. Mm-hmm. But and I find a computer that's like, well, I've, oh, first I find a, a security door. It doesn't even give me the option. So I'm like, okay, I have to go find somewhere to unlock this. Right. So I go all this random long way. Go up into like the roof. I find a computer crack it, open the security door, and I can see down, I see the security door swing open. So I'm like, okay, great. So I drop down. As soon as I drop down out of the middle, taking, I mean, fucking the size of a super mutant behemoth. <laughs> Brown, Myler Queen. Because when you fight one before in the story mission, you have help, and you're in a big, wide open area, and you're kind of prepared. Yeah. Now, now it's just me, fucking Myler Queen, in a small enclosed area, and I'm super fucked up. Did you have your power armor? No, <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> no, not at all. So I, like, I'm trying to kill it. I can, I don't have any big weapons that can do shit. To uh-huh. her. I try to hide somewhere and snipe her to death, uh-huh. but she constantly spawns um, Myrlock hatchlings, in- infinitely. So, and then you basically have to re-equip a melee weapon because stuff that gets in your face in this game is fucking hard to kill. Yeah, especially like the little things like mylarks and those fucking bloat flies and yeah. the giant mosquitoes, the mole God. rats even mole rats too. Yeah, so it's just so I'm sitting there like I switch to like my power gauntlet and I'm trying to smash these bugs. Uh-huh. I look back up, I get two shots again. I'm getting swarmed by more mylarks again. So I just I do that several times before I'm just like, okay, fuck it, I give up. So I just run through the exit. She can't get through, but just like waves of her hatchlings are coming after me. So I'm crawling through like more tunnels trying to go back up. Yeah. And then like, oh, then raiders. Okay, here's where they all are. So I'm just fighting waves and waves of raiders, <laughs> waves and waves of mylarks. I get to the top where I think I can get free. Yeah. Raider and power armor. Yeah. All right, fuck it. <laughs> so I barely scrape through killing this guy. And... Then I get stuck for a long time. Like, I cannot find the exit. How the fuck do I get out of here? And tucked away, like, you have to go up this staircase that's barricaded where you kill just a um, turret. That's all that's up there. Uh I was like, what the fuck? And you can just see if you turn around through, like, one of the slats, you can reach your hand through and grab an atrium key. And then that lets you take an elevator that takes you one story up so then you can get the fuck out. So I did that. As soon as I got it, I was like, fuck that Myrtle Queen. I went back. <laughs> I got all my Kims. <laughs> I, I've never used a fat man in any Fallout. Yeah. I've just tucked them away. I've uh-huh. never used it. So I went. I got my power armor. I upgraded it. Titanium plating. The highest <laughs> model I could do. Uh-huh. I got the fat man. The missile launcher. <laughs> I've got all my Kims. Went back. Went back to where I had to drop down. Please fucking, tell me she killed fucking you. Fucking drug myself out. <laughs> drop down. Does not respawn. So I guess after that initial run through, doesn't respond. So she just didn't come back. Oh my god! Yeah. <laughs> so I'm assuming the raiders killed her. I, well, well, I killed the raiders. So 
<laughs> like I said, humans in this game are easy. It's everything else that's just fucked up. My alert, queens are diabolical. <laughs> I imagine she was thinking, you know what? Yeah. That guy's coming back. He's, he's an armor gonna- on now. I'm fucking staying down here. <laughs> but there is the other set of, the, my first suit of power armor that I found was, because I sent you a text message saying, fucking federal blah, blah, blah. Because that's where I found my first legendary enemy. I like those that, that are basically notorious enemies you can fight and kill and get rare equipment. Yeah, I think that's really cool too, because especially like, They'll drop things that pertain to them. For instance, mm-hmm. I killed a feral ghoul, um, Romer, mm-hmm. and he dropped a double barrel shotgun that deals 25% extra damage to ghouls. So I was like, all right, I guess I don't have a ghoul problem anymore. Because like that was, man, when the, f- the first time I saw ghouls in this game was ridiculous. Because like I was going through this <laughs> game, and I was like, this game's pretty easy. And then I rolled across a railroad... Or just a rail yard. Yeah. Just a rail yard. <laughs> and I was just like, all right, cool. Uh, and I'm walking by. I'm walking on the track. And there's this dead guy lying on the, on the track. I'm like, yeah, dead guy. Apocalypse. Plenty of dead guys. And then he gets up. And uh, by the time he gets up, he's on me. Like, he's that fast. <laughs> like, he's like, I mean, the fucking flash or some shit. And, like, he's on me and, like, scratching me. And I'm taking radiation damage. And I'm, like, backing off. Like, whoa, whoa, whoa. And then, like, as I'm backing up, I shoot him. And the moment I shoot him, I see 12 of these fuckers, like, <laughs> swarm out of the rail yard. It's like, oh, shit, I need to run. Yeah. <laughs> you actually have to do that in this game sometimes. <laughs> yeah, they're hard. I don't like it. I get, I'm, like, really bad about just sort of in any game where you're just, like, shooting a gun, just getting really stressed out and just, like, spraying gunfire <laughs> in, like, every <laughs> direction possible. <laughs> I'm not supposed to play games like this, but, yeah. And they get the a lot of the mutants and, yeah, the flying creatures and the ghouls, especially, are, like, really fast. And uh-huh. they on you. And they're in your face. And then you're just, I can't. So, yeah, melee is actually the way you're playing at Drew's. Probably better. I mean, that's what you did. You didn't know. You were like, what is that? And I had a switchblade in my inventory. Oh, yeah. I was just like <laughs> stabbing things. <laughs> <laughs> better for me than shooting a gun, which is like, eh, eh, eh. <laughs> You didn't modify an energy weapon to help you out with that because you could modify one to have like a huge arcing spread. Okay. So you're, you're less like, it does less damage, but you're not going to miss stuff very often. That's what that's I need. That's cool. That's what I need because I'm like the A team pretty much every time I play like, a shooter game. <laughs> fire everywhere and they're still just coming at me. <laughs> so, but yeah, uh, the fl- flying. What are the flying singing? Tell me, it's like dragonfly. They're like giant. Are there like a newer, I guess, creature to the game? The, I don't know. Uh, is sting. it the blood? I can't remember. It's like the blood bug or something like that. The, is that what you're talking about? like a sting something it looks, and it looks like a giant mosquito or a dragonfly and i've seen the blood the blood bug is there's something that looks like a, the the huge mosquito that like gets in your face and you have to visit you'll see your character like grab it by its needle or whatever and push it out of you and it yeah. will spit blood back out too oh, yeah man those things a giant mosquito or like it's just a giant dragonfly but it's just it's really i mean it's big but it's narrow it's like a long mosquito, and it's yeah. in your face, and then when it flies away, it's, it's really hard. I had a swarm of them come at me, or like right before we got on to do the show. That's what I was doing. Was like, <laughs> what the fuck are those? <laughs> just like, <laughs> yeah, I've had more deaths because of those. Because like you're just trying to shoot, and they're so hard to hit. Even in that, it's just like miss, hit, miss, miss, miss. It's just in the fact that melee that's weapons. You have to get melee weapons. Does not stop time anymore. And it just, it slows it down. Yeah. It slows it down drastically, but the fact that it doesn't stop it stresses me out when mm-hmm. I'm trying to, like, pick out body parts to, to shoot. Like, there's so the many percentage times. percentage dropping of, like, how you can hit it. Yeah. It's like, you're trying to go through it, and they're ducking behind something. <laughs> yep. Or you'll get two shots in, and when you're third shot, they're behind something, so you just miss. Mm-hmm. That pisses me off when I use bats, and it still doesn't work because they've already kind of moved a little bit. Mm-hmm. and. Oh, that drives me crazy. I think overall the game is more difficult than Fallout 3 in New Vegas. I don't know how you guys feel. I think it's way harder, yeah. yeah. And again, that's like I'm not good at these games anyway, and I definitely think it's harder. I lucked out with that death claw, because so far I've only fought one death claw, and I lucked out so hard. 
Is that what I fought? Is the death claw? No, though that's the first thing you fight at the beginning. Oh, when you get yeah. That, well, well he told me it was power. coming. Yeah, because he had already played. And so he was kind of watching me play, like, the opening stuff. So he kind of warned me. He was like, you might want to back up. Something's about to happen. <laughs> and so if he hadn't done that, I probably would have died. But he's, yeah. Did you did you die? Oh, yeah. It killed me, like, twice. Yeah, same here. Because, you, yeah, you get your power armor and the minigun, but, like, you have to get down there in its face to kill it. Well, I went down there, and it fell into the sewer, and it couldn't get out. So I just walked over on top of it, aimed down, brrr, dead. Sounds great. So I just, yeah. I just got really yeah. fucking lucky. That is sweet. Yeah, it took me a couple times. It is really fun in that cinematic, because that's another thing where it's like, holy shit, this is like a big cinematic scene. Like This is, this is really cool, because you've got to like run up to the roof, grab the power armor. Once you got the power armor, you got to rip a fucking mini gun off a plane. And then you jump off the top of the building down on the ground, Mm -hmm. um, and, and kill everything essentially, because not only is there a death claw down there, there's, there's raiders who are firing. And so I was making a beeline for, uh, for the death claw. And on my way, I'm just, they've added a bash button in this game, which is amazing because it reminds me of like, Left for Dead 2, like that's one of my favorite things is like when a ghoul is up on me, I'll use Bash to like shove him back. Mm -hmm. And then when he's stumbling back, I'll pull the shotgun out and shoot him. So I uh, I was like, let me try this this bash thing out on a raider. So I'm I'm dashing towards the death claw and I bash the raider in my power armor and he just fucking explodes. (laughs) (laughs) And I was like, all right, that's a pretty good feeling. They 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 nailed like they nailed that adventures that like cinematic i mean it felt like i was it it felt like i was in a post apocalyptic survival movie i think that's the last thing in the strength tree is where you basically get trample with power armor yeah i saw that where you can stun people yeah. and stuff like that yeah see the the controls on pc have frustrated me a little bit because like okay the button to bash bash you have to hold it down to pull the pin on a grenade and throw it yeah so i'm trying to like throw grenades and i'm just like so i'm way off I, Perfect timing, and I'm just swinging the butt of my of my rifle into nothing. I do that like every single time. <laughs> I just keep it's like, uh, uh. it's like stop, just throw the grenade. <laughs> or like I'm yeah. trying to, people are in my face. I'm trying to pull up my menu to get like stems and chems, and then I'll accidentally hit Q and bring up like the critical. It doesn't stop time, so they're still moving, so I'm still dying, and then everything. I'll hit the command line, everything then just stops completely. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah i've died just from key error a lot yeah i think drew did it the other day where he was trying to like switch weapons with like your favorite thing oh yeah and then you accidentally like he like did a stim pack instead oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that, i needed a gun yeah yeah I played with. I started playing on mouse and keyboard and then decided i want to play this game in bed so I switched to a controller, and I don't know. It's been so long since I played Fallout 3 or New Vegas that I don't know if they switched some things around. But what happened on the controller was I kept like canceling when I went to, when I meant to say okay. Mm-hmm. So like that happened so many times. Like I exited out of the Pip Boy like accidentally eight times in a row, and it was like ah fuck it, I'll just sit in my computer chair and use the keyboard. Oh <laughs> yeah, I see. I accidentally pull up the Pip Boy like constantly. Yeah, I don't know what I think Circle is. No, you think it should be like bash, right? Or crouch, maybe? Or crouch or, or I don't something. know. I yeah. I pull up the Pit Boy like I make probably every twenty seconds on accident. <laughs> that sounds about right. I'm glad I'm not the only one. Like what time is it? What time is it? <laughs> I don't know. Well, whatever. I made it. I'll be okay. I'll be okay. I mean, do you guys have any other Fallout Fallout stories? <sighs> You're the one with the notes. Are you here the salute? The only thing I was going to say, I was going to save this for our show, but I'll just go ahead and use it. Whatever people can hear me say it twice. Go listen to our show and hear me say this twice. Where can they find your show? Uh, Mm Hopsandheroes.podbean.com and also on iTunes or the podcast app. And I think pretty much anywhere else you can listen to podcasts. Yes. Except SoundCloud. I don't think we're on SoundCloud. We're not on SoundCloud. We're not cool. We're not hip like you guys. We'll get, we're going to get there. Yeah, uh, we don't get many listens on yeah, it. It's not don't. a big deal. <laughs> <laughs> we're we're debating whether or not we're going to re-up it, which is going to make like three people listening right now kind of mad. <laughs> but I don't know. We'll but see. But we're working on a way so you can just download it directly from tadpog.com. Oh, nice. Okay. Yeah. We, so hopefully uh, once we do that, then we won't need SoundCloud. Yeah. 
the only thing the only thing I tweeted about it actually, so oh, yeah. you can also follow us on Twitter. But uh, <laughs> was when I very first started playing the game. The guy that you meet at the beginning, uh, Preston. Preston, mm-hmm. and I'm calling the wrong name. Uh, looks exactly like Brian Fellows from <laughs> <laughs> Saturday Night Live. <laughs> And I can't, I mean, it's like even his lips kind of look like he's wearing lip gloss and he has the hat and like it's the, the same hat. It's, it's the, the same, same hat. The fold is up on the same. We got to save the minute, man. <laughs> <laughs> get away from me with that dog. <laughs> get bit. <laughs> I don't want no super mutant in my town. <laughs> and so that was, that's my one. That was my only, like, that's been my big, yeah. huge observation of the game is yeah. that Preston looks like Brian Fellows. And that's all I got. And so I ruined it because that was going to be my big anecdote for our episode about Fallout, but maybe something else will happen. It's like, like constantly cleaning sanctuary. Yeah. I think it's, really, <laughs> just like, it's just like life. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you for taking quality from your show and giving it to us. I appreciate it. Yeah, that. we do appreciate nice. your sacrifice. <laughs> maybe we'll get a few listeners for this. I don't know. Maybe. I hope so. What are you? What were your? Oh, um, I was gonna say I ran in like outside of um, Diamond City. I ran into like this little park area, and it was like Swan lives here. Keep out. Oh, I know exactly. This is in my notes too. Fuck. I don't see Swan, so I'm gonna just gonna go see what he has over here. That's a nice name. And, yeah, <laughs> and so like, oh yeah, I find like this little bedding area. You find some notes, and it's like you know, oh the uh, you know doctor said you know I've been selected for the trial. Everything's going good. You know, and it's like you find the next note, and he's like, this virus is making me feel a little weird. And then like the preceding notes get a little bit more crazier. And then all of a sudden, a super mutant behemoth just like pops out of the, like the pond in the middle of this part. Mm. Yeah, I did not expect that shit to happen to me. Just needs to stop me to the ground. And I was like, "All right, I'll be back for you later." <laughs> like, I don't have my power armor. I don't have fucking anything. So I was just like running backwards, just like bottle cap mine, bottle cap mine, bottle cap mine. <laughs> He just, yeah. yeah, no, he just smashed me. He, had to, he did that, like, yeah, just smash into the ground. My body just flung. <laughs> yeah, absurd. I've um, gotten one shot at a couple times. And now that I have some fusion fusion cores, yeah, I think I'm ready to go back. He drops a very nice melee weapon. It replaced okay. my Grognax axe. Okay. Awesome. Uh, to think, yeah, the Myrler Queen, the first one I ran into, that was shocking. I also missed a really important weapon that'll make her a lot easier um when you're doing like the minutemen story missions oh really what is it uh, yeah j- just no, um, <laughs> keep it up to yourself uh, like, <laughs> tips, like, tips and tricks segment <laughs> uh, yeah, you clear out like the initial set of Meyer lyrics you find some eggs and in one of these rooms where you're clearing out the eggs there's just a missile launcher and some missiles sitting on the oh, table see i missed that too i just had like my like my <laughs> cult 45 just like six sh- shots run away that's what, like, no, mine was, like, Mine City, because I knew where she was going to pop out before she pops out, so I was like, oh, I'm going to set a mine here, and a mine here, and a mine, like, and that's how I killed her the first time, but, yeah. Um, when you were trying to explain the hacking to me. Oh, yeah. And about the words. Yeah. And, like, oh, you have to find what's similar and what's not similar. Yeah. And I was getting so frustrated because I thought he meant the meaning of the words. <laughs> 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 like, analyzing, I was like, okay, so it's, like, you know, I don't know, just like beam, okay, fist, okay, what are those? Those don't really have anything in common, so can't <laughs> those. And then he was like, no, like the letters. So yeah. I got, I don't know, I, I hate <laughs> the computer hacking. I don't like it. I get really, I had forgotten about that kind of stuff. I Did, mean, I mean, do you know that you can find stuff inside of brackets and arrows to... I do that more okay. than I actually looking at the words i'll find the brackets first to try yeah because i didn't know that until like the end of new vegas i played through all of three and most of new vegas just guessing words and backing out and guessing words and backing out I had no clue yeah i had forgotten about the whole hacking terminal aspect because it's been so long since i played like three and uh or i didn't really play new vegas very much and so i just was like oh yeah i, I don't know <laughs> i can you know bobby pin like like yeah lock pick whatever but the, the computers, I don't like. I don't like that. So I usually just kind of, I'm like, I, I've done a couple. I've done a couple with Drew's help, and I've done a few by myself. I don't think I've gotten locked out of one yet. Worst case scenario, I'll just, I don't know. Well, see, like before, you would get permanently locked out. And this one, though, you're locked out for 10 seconds, and then you can go back again. 
Oh, he oh saved, I didn't oh. realize. No, I've just like reloaded a save. <laughs> he told realize. me that it was permanent. Yeah, yeah. It, it used it, to it, be. It wasn't yeah, all that's others. a change. Oh, oh, good to know. All right, good tips, tips and tricks. <laughs> Have you guys found any bobbleheads? Yeah. Uh, found the one i found like two or three. Oh, okay boom i've yeah. only found the one i know the one you're talking about you're talking about the perception bobblehead yeah it's yeah. like in the state house right I or, or, the or freedom museum i can't you freedom museum. remember where it is <laughs> sorry <laughs> boston? boston somewhere in boston yeah it's in the boston area <laughs> um but that's about it that's all i know because i i don't want to cheat but i know it's gonna be so fucking hard finding these bobbleheads it's gonna be like, so hard like because like polygon right now like polygon.com like like i don't know their first 20 articles are all like fallout like here's mm-hmm. the, you know here's everything here's was it in the vault the vault oh yeah yeah no yeah. not like no what's the vault that you go in with nick valentine one that's one for yeah the speech one is in vault 114 i found okay. that one i think that might be the other one that i found uh, yeah okay. and i i thought maybe i'd found a third one but i'm probably wrong okay I can't remember. Because then I found the melee bobblehead. Um, I guess it's easy. It's I see where it's very easy to miss in the top of of what's uh, something tower in in downtown Boston where you get where you get one of the companions. Like they come out of this room, and if you run in the room they ran out of, then it's just sitting there. Huh. So then I forget where I got explosives. I think I got explosives in what I thought was a super cool storyline. Like, I want to take this idea and use it somewhere in D&D about these raiders that worship fire and the forge and this, like, their psychotic leader that, like, has all these rules and regulations. And if they, if they do like they ever cry out in pain and stuff like that he feeds them to the forge and he keeps this huge vat of molten iron that he's just constantly throwing people in and i'm pretty sure like it was i think the explosive one was somewhere in there yeah interesting yeah i there is a really in the um there's a real nasty trick in the uh police station not the um not the police station where the Brotherhood of Steel are set up. There's mm-hmm. another. There's another building. Raccoon City. Some. Something. Some, yeah. Raccoon. <laughs> I don't know. Something like that. Uh, there is a key that you need to get to unlock an evidence room, mm-hmm. and the keychain is a Vault Boy head. <laughs> so when I saw the Vault Boy head, I was like, oh! ah, bubble, motherfucker. Fine. <laughs> key. Unlock. Great. I'll collect my four fucking. Desk fans. Yeah, it's like four <laughs> ten millimeter piece pistols. Great. All right, sweet. Here, uh, dog meat. Open your mouth. Thanks. <laughs> what uh, what companions are y'all using? I'm I'm using dog meat. Dog meat. Oh, I have yeah. access to what one two three four five six, and I'm still just like straight up dog meat. I don't want anybody else. Um, you use Nick Valentine. Yeah, I'm a huge Nick Valentine fan. I've heard him. I haven't met him. I've heard him mentioned in the winter hollow tapes. Uh, Cause it's like every police station I've been to mentions Nick Valentine. He, yeah, he is a, a cool character. It, yeah. He's scary. He's a little creepy when you're sneaking around and you see his face come like, I don't know. You're like, yeah, you turn to the side and it's just like, he's right there and he only has like half a face and it's like, Oh God, <laughs> it's like, that's my companion. No, I still use dog meat though. Um, he's not the best for like stealth, but he does find stuff for you and that's exciting. It's like, he found something for you. And then sometimes it's just like a cheap pistol and it's like, God damn it, dog meat. <laughs> and he holds people down. I like it when he yes, knocks people off. I like that like, too. And he grapples them. Cause I, I had strong, the super mutant and like, I feel like he just kind of stood there then he would charge somebody and just stand there and, I didn't like strong. Um, I found Kate, but I haven't used her yet. Um, I haven't used Piper. I, um, I just got Nick, and then I haven't used Preston either. So I really have only used strong and didn't like it and went back to dog meat. I like dog meat because um, he. Fe- I feel like he doesn't judge me. That's true, he doesn't. <laughs> he has very good, accurate dog animations. No, I just... I. Bailey, you'd mentioned stealth, and it made me realize this is like the first fucking fallout where I've just like walked into every room, like, what's up? Boom, boom, boom. <laughs> yeah, I have so many stealth boys, I've not even fucked with it. <laughs> I don't want to put that many points into agility when I have points in everything else. In every other fallout, though, I've spent like 80% of the game crouched down. <laughs> <laughs> well, I feel like, though, because 
by the time I get swarmed by enemies, I freak out so much anyway that I stealth is kind of pointless because it doesn't help me. Really, it'll just be like, oh, there's a bunch of enemies. Oh, God, help. And like, I'm just like, <laughs> hide, hide, hide. <laughs> yeah, I sneak in and then I freak out. And then just, yeah, so it's not really, it's kind of pointless and really just takes up more time. <laughs> yes, danger icon, I'm aware of the situation. Yeah. <laughs> Very aware that I'm going to get swarmed 20 times before I succeed, but that's okay. That's how I play games. I This is a complete aside. You asked if we had any more, any Fallout 4 stories. One of my favorite things that I found in the game, and by the way, everyone here has pretty much mentioned, like, you go into a building, and then that building kind of tells you a story through terminals that mm-hmm. you find and things that you read, and that is amazing. I feel like that is, like, one of the strengths of this game is that you can, like, each little section of the game is, like, its own little story, and I think that's really cool. Like, hearing the stories of people who live in this wasteland is more interesting to me than, than anything uh, in this game. Uh, but there is one terminal in this police station that uh, was by the sergeant, and it was every single buddy cop um, cliche in one journal entry. And it was like, <laughs> fuck yes, because he talks about, I'm three days from retirement. I'm getting too old for this shit. It's like, yes! <laughs> <laughs> and then he talks about uh, the two the two cops who are working below him just going out and causing all kinds of collateral damage. <laughs> like he doesn't know how the city's going to pay the insurance. And all it, was, it was brilliant. I love little moments like that. Like where I don't have to pick up the the weird West perk or whatever to like run yeah. across funny shit. There's a place I won't talk about because I don't want to spoil it. But just a very little aside: uh, a building I ran by called the Boyston Club, okay. and like. The- there's there's not anybody to like really fight in there. It's just like it's a two to three rooms that tell a, an interesting little story. Yeah. So I I enjoyed that. I'll look for it. Oh, oh yeah, God. I found a bus full of teddy bears earlier today. That was oh that was that- oh I walked into the room <laughs> and he was just like at this weird angle though, and it looked like the teddy I don't know how to say it. The teddy bears were in a explicit position. <laughs> <laughs> Drew, are you arranging all these teddy bears in sexual positions? These ghouls did it. <laughs> <laughs> no, baby, it was the ghouls. <laughs> mannequins standing in a like, naked mannequin oh, yeah. standing in a circle yeah. around a bathtub. Are, are mannequins porn in this game? Because like the world's gone to shit. Like so, there's no like no video porn. There's no internet. Are ma- are, are mannequins the closest thing to porn that we have? In the same place, wasn't there? There was like a dead. This is so sick. Like, There's like a dead body, like a deteriorated dead body, but it was like in bed with but a yeah, mannequin. Yeah, he was like wrapped. He yeah, was like the holding a mannequin. Skeleton was wrapped around the mannequin. And then there was. I yeah. see them in different like raider places, like when they're tucked yeah. behind like clearly hidden places. Like I really do think mannequins are post-apocalyptic porn because it's yeah. the closest thing you're gonna get. Bent the yeah, inflatable doll. <laughs> Just <laughs> the real doll. Yeah. <laughs> I think we're going to find, I hope we find an actual like little bit that says something about this man who got so rich selling mannequins (laughs) to all the people. who. See, I need to find my dad's weird joke about mannequins and put that in for the (laughs) (laughs) stare. That's that's, that's about time. So thank you guys for coming on. Yeah. Uh, I appreciate it. Yeah. Yeah. And we covered about as much into the game as I thought we'd be able to, because I knew we'd have so much to talk about. Oh, yeah. We've essentially just, like, did characters and a few stories, and oh, it's time. Yep. (laughs) So, um, I know you mentioned earlier in the show, but um, where can we find you again? Oh, uh, yeah, we are at hopsandheroes.podbean.com, and then we're available on, yeah, basically most popular yeah. podcast formats. iTunes. iTunes, um, Stitcher, I believe we're on that. Uh, yeah, just Podomatic. We have a Facebook pod. page, so if you go to, I think it's just facebook.com slash hopsandheroes, and, and then we're on Twitter, hopsandheroes, and... We have a Twitch that we haven't used yet, but we, you know, true. if you want to like watch me play video <laughs> games like on the couch in my pajamas, then that's a thing that I can do, I guess. I want to watch you randomly spray bullets and miss things and then die. And then it's... you're like, why don't you? <laughs> <laughs> so bad. No, I don't. Yeah, I don't stream myself playing video games because I'm just so bad at video games. Like, people. <laughs> 
other people would be watching and be like, what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> I, I get it. I've read enough YouTube comments to never want to post a thing on YouTube ever. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, so we're everywhere. Yeah, we and got that. Yeah. Just listen to us. We talk about all kinds of... Talk about beers and video games. Yeah, so. that's pretty much it. <laughs> we re- yeah, we drink. Yeah, so I'm usually a little tipsy, and we talk. We review a craft beer uh, that we're drinking, and then we talk about video games and just stuff that's happening in our lives. And being a couple that plays games, not exactly together, but just like you know, we both individually play games, <laughs> in house in separate rooms. <laughs> so, Sweet, check yeah. it out, everybody. I I really enjoy it. I'm glad that you guys are doing mm-hmm. it. So. Yeah. Yeah, thanks. Yeah, you guys are like the big inspiration. So yeah, this is yeah. Thanks, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> well, we'll keep talking about dicks and assholes. We'll we'll just do it. We'll it, think of you inspirational guys. Inspirational dicks and assholes. <laughs> That's our thing. <laughs> Very little dicks and assholes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, when, the first, when the episode when we started recording I was like we're being very like polite and like because I feel like I told you I don't know Dave if you saw on Facebook I was like yeah I was listening to you guys at work and like I was opening the store it's like six o'clock in the morning <laughs> and I usually like blast like bad 90s music or just like whatever weird indie stuff I listen to um but I sometimes listen to podcasts and I was listening to it like really really loud I just have it over the store speakers because I'm alone in the store but then the girl that was working with me later that day like came in early and so she comes in and you guys in their middle of in the middle of this very like serious not serious but this very in depth conversation about like pooping in public <laughs> <laughs> butt mufflers yes <laughs> like and I was like it's so loud I mean I'm blasting I'm like I'm sorry <laughs> I- now. <laughs> I think that's that should be like one of our news like subtitles or something, Tyler. It's like Tad Pog, <laughs> podcasting you'll have to apologize for. Because <laughs> that was the, the other caller, like they got his speaker hung on something as he was walking into an old woman's house. Just at like a really bad moment. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That was, that was Jordakai, I believe. Yeah. The guy the guy's name we can't, we, we can't remember, right. It's Ashley Shake's story about how to Turn on a PlayStation with a Tifa doll. <laughs> <laughs> I wish Jacob was here just to see his reaction. <laughs> oh. Well, thanks for listening, everybody. You can find the show on iTunes, SoundCloud, or Stitcher. So don't miss the next episode. Probably more Fallout 4. Is that what we're going to do? I, th- I, mean, I think so. I mean, I'm fine with I it. I think we should. I think we're going to have more stories so, to yeah. tell. Yeah. Okay. All right. Let's do it. <laughs> fallout break. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's gonna be. You realize it's gonna be like two months of fallout. Yeah. We are gonna. We are gonna lose <laughs> listeners at some point. That's fine. <laughs> <laughs> uh, still love five star iTunes reviews. They they help us the most. So please go to iTunes, subscribe, give the show a five star rating, write something in there, and we try to help you out by whatever you write in there. Be it a game, a guest host. Do something else besides Fallout, please. Whatever. <laughs> and we we promise whatever you put in there, we will get to that eventually. eventually. Uh, don't worry, guys. Like Tyler said, we're going to be back. We're going to be talking. It looks like we're going to be talking about Fallout 4 again. So, <laughs> so buckle up. Here it comes. Um, which is, I can I know it's we can totally do it because like we finished the episode and I already am thinking about things. Where it's like, oh, I forgot to say this. Yep. I forgot to say that. Yep. <laughs> so, uh, in the meantime, you can always find us on tadpog.com that's where the show notes live you can find us on facebook or at facebook.com slash tadpog there's a lot of cool people there doing a lot of cool shit do you not want to hear more fallout 4 let us know there we're probably we're gonna do it anyway <laughs> <laughs> but i mean we'll we'll hear your complaints if you want to give them but we're gonna do it anyway because we'll i mean if someone asks us to stop we will stop doing fallout Eventually, so I mean, it might be six or seven. It episodes. will happen. <laughs> We're gonna stop Fallout Four talk long enough for me to do an episode by episode um, episode. <laughs> <laughs> It'll be bad when we start just the episode is just us playing Fallout Four in real time. <laughs> right. I'm going to start, actually what I'm going to do is I'm just going to, we're going to turn this into Battlestar Galactica podcast. I'm going to start it from the beginning and then each episode I'll be like, this is what happened on Battlestar Galactica. I'll actually, it'll be very boring. I'll just read a transcript. Yeah. <laughs> give your, give your running commentary. Actually read the <laughs> That's line. longer than the episode. <laughs> I will 
co-host that with you. <laughs> would you like, I'm sure there are a bunch of listeners who would love to spend three times the amount of time it would take to watch the entertaining show um, to hear us talk about it. You know, the script of a typical Gilmore Girls episode is three to four times longer than the other Bible. shows of its length. Oh, okay. Yeah, than the Bible, <laughs> because they talk they so talk? long. Yeah. yeah, the scripts are enormous for every episode. Yep, that's true. And I actually have listened to a podcast before where they really do just like kind of do read throughs of things. It's really embarrassing and like fangirly, and I won't go into it. But yeah. no, no, I get it. I listened to a, a show called Mission Log, which was. Uh, some some two comedians were going through and rewatching all of the original series Star Trek, and then they did one episode per episode they watched, and it was delightful. Yeah, <laughs> I've listened basically to like every Outlander podcast that exists, and that's pretty much the only thing they do is just like talk about what happens in the episode, and then there's only been one season, so then they're like, well, we still need to do something. Let's talk about everything that happens in every chapter of the book. That's not- <laughs> <laughs> that's pages long, and there's nine of them. I love that we live in an age where, like, that's a thing. I really do. Like, I think that's amazing. That that's, like, that's not something that our parents could have done. Like, they, there's, like, nothing that, that our parents were into, like, that they couldn't, like, sure, there's the stuff, like, there's the magazines. Like, they could be like, oh, well, I really like better homes and, I guess, gardens. <laughs> so I'll pick this up. Not so much of the garden part, right? but I do like better homes. Yeah. <laughs> well, I like the gardening better than the homes. Well, we'll share it. <laughs> Uh, you can also find us on Twitter I'm in the middle of an outro, by the way, guys, uh, <laughs> which you can find us at Tadfog underscore podcast. It's cumbersome. I realize. Uh, thank you for everybody who is retweeting us. Uh, that is an amazing thing because uh, it helps spread the word of the show. I know that um, we were just we were just mentioned in a tweet from Drew and Bailey. So thanks for doing that, guys. Uh, you can find us. So I'll say thanks, baby. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that, I guess that's all the places you can find us. Uh, if you if you want to call us, you can do that. We'll play your call on an upcoming um, all call show. The number is two seven zero eight eight three two five five five. And finally, we um, let's see if I can quote Travis from the radio station in Fallout. This station uh, doesn't make a lot of caps so <laughs> uh, if you want to send us caps you can find us we've got a patreon at uh, patreon.com slash tadpog uh, thank you very much for everybody who uh, has already donated uh, we really do appreciate it and we uh, actually use that money to pay for stuff for the show might not be soundcloud coming up i don't know we'll, we'll make a decision that's uh, it man that's all i got we also have a uh, p.o box where you can send us stuff. So if there's something you want us to send, like try for an outro or games that we actually receive get high priority. Not super high, but, they do, super but high. they do get bumped up. Um, it, unless it's something Matt Barger <laughs> sent to us like right. three years ago. Otherwise, the games we've gotten are in <laughs> high priority. I'm also looking at you, Street Fighter the movie. <laughs> well, w- once we get a Saturn to actually play that on. <laughs> in three years, when we're done with Fallout 4 episodes, we will get to that. So if there's something you want us to send us, uh, please send that to Tadpog Studios, care of Nicole Nance, P.O. Box 3785, Paducah, Kentucky, 42002. It'll also be somewhere in the show notes, so you don't have to like rewind and listen to the very end of this part of this one big episode. <laughs> hey, Drew. Yes. Our theme song. Is Moves. Hey, Bailey. Uh-huh. Who is that by? Oh, fuck. Yeah, that's about what I expected. <laughs> Said you were a fan. <laughs> oh. It's Sycamore Drive. Sycamore Drive. <laughs> Shit, I really am sorry. <laughs> I was but I'm just sitting here like drinking my smart water, like staring at the wall. <laughs> Well, oh, there goes our couple of listeners. We were gonna get from them. <laughs> well, there's a chance to redeem yourself. A link to that track can be found where? Did you get it from freemusicarchive.org? We did. That, that, that is where we got mm-hmm. the song. So that is true. Uh, yes. Technically, that's true. That is, that, we'll give you a pass. <laughs> <laughs> okay. 
Oh, oh tadpog.com. Nailed it. Thank you. I was like, there's a link to it on your website. Is that what you're talking about? <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> so how should we close this out? Tadpog.com. <laughs> <laughs> You want to close it out like like Bailey trying to remember something? Yeah, I guess we can do that. <laughs> okay. I guess we'll do that. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> so until next time, uh, uh, that thing that you <laughs> say. Uh, yeah. Deciduous Sagittarius? <laughs> <laughs> tropical. Tro- is, it tro- is, it tro- is it Is it tropical? Is that? that- tro- tropical Capricorn. <laughs> tropical Capricorn. <laughs> I knew that. (laughs) (laughs) I did. I knew that. I just wasn't paying attention. I'm not going to lie. I was just like, oh, there's the outro. I'm going to stop interrupting the outro to talk about stupid shit like I always do. (laughs) No, that's perfect. I actually love it when I'm like in the middle of a conversation that all of a sudden this little invisible indicator goes off on my mind. It's like, hey, bro. You're doing an outro.